Hello friends! Welcome back! We're uh, playing Gone Home. Uh, I did it originally in honor of the holidays, thinking, oh, Gone Home! They're going home! Just like everyone else, going home for the holidays. No, apparently it's scary. <laughs> also, the dogs are barking. My apologies. Uh, I fixed some sound issues from last time, so... Uh, really sorry for, like, the weird echoey stuff. Uh, I fixed it. It was a little bit of a technical glitch. Uh, and now I've turned on subtitles, too. So hopefully everything's a lot easier to understand. Um, so yeah, let's go. I'm nervous, but I'm loving this so far. It's such a mystery. Okay. Um, oh, resume. Great. Okay, off we go. Uh, oh, yeah, I wanted to check out all these doors. Here we go. Here's this. Pull the string. All right, what's this note going to say? Welcome, new student. We hope that you are exci as excited about your first day at Goodfellow High School as we are. Please be sure to bring the following with you on your first day of classes so that you can get right into the swing of things. One sturdy folder with pockets for each of your six class periods. One line notebook per period. Or one large notebook with six divided sections. At least six pens. Uh, colored pencils, combination lock, nutritious lunch, a positive attitude. Oh my god, that's the only thing not crossed through. Uh, please remember to get plenty of sleep the night before and be ready for the first bell to ring at 8 a.m. See you soon, and again, welcome. I'm going to turn up the sound a little bit on the game. I hope it's not too loud now, but it felt really quiet last, last time. Anyway, moving on. Technology technology. Ugh. Okay, see you soon, and again, welcome. Beth Lance, principal. Oh, oh here we go. God. You are so lucky you finished high school before we moved into this house. So, it's the first day of school, oh. and there I am, introducing myself to the class, and I say that I just Mr. moved Betsy. into the house on Arbor Hill. All of a sudden, every kid in the room turns and just stares like I suddenly transformed into a mutant. Oh no. I just stood there, pushing pretty hard for a rewind button. Because now maybe nobody knows my name, but they all know who I am. The Psycho House Girl. <sighs> Great. Oh, it's so dark in here. Oh, here we go. Light switch. Psycho house. Is my house haunted? I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Book about poltergeists. And... All these creepy sounds I keep hearing everywhere. Oh my god. Open door. Man, this game is really creating an atmosphere. I'll give that. Oh. Open the door. Not crouched. Okay, great. Examine the form. Uh, electrical inspection. Wiring in houses technically up to safety and at amperage requirements. However, multiple layers of wiring have been added into structure over the last hundred years. System is frequently unpredictable. Lights blink out for no clear reason. Pressure on floorboards and door frames disrupt circuits wired directly behind the surface. Properly reworking the electrical system would be highly destructive to the walls, floor, and fixtures of the structure. After discussion with Mr. Greenbrier, since there are no current safety concerns, issues will not be addressed. Ah! Uh, no wonder it's Psycho House. Everyone thinks it's haunted. And they've got good cause. Because all the electronics are crazy. Okay, I'm turning that off right now. I do not like that sound. Oh. Oh, I don't have the combination. Okay. What's in here? I'm sure I'll find it. Nothing. Nothing in here. Turn on the lamp. Crumpled paper. John Russell opened his eye opened his eyes and saw them, the stars, twinkling as if he were lying on the grass in his family's yard in Massachusetts, even though that place was a million miles away. No, he blinked the sleep from his eyes, looking through the carbon-reinforced safety glass of the space station. Archim... Archim... Uh, Archimedes? Yes, he was a long way from home, but the future needed him. 
Ooh, John Russell's head swam. He felt incredibly drunk, despite not having touched a drop in hours. He vomited onto his feet, his bare feet. He stared for a moment. La la la, processing his sick flecked toenails, scanning up his bare shins, bare knees. He was completely naked. <laughs> he looked up. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing. That's. I'm five, apparently. Um. He looked up and met the eyes of a gorgeous blonde woman wearing a tight poly polymer fiber tunic. The fabric that was strained at the seams contained her generous bosom was emblazoned with the phrase, matter transference operator. Then he passed out. <laughs> oh, oh, here's another. John Russell had crossed the gap, the gap in time. Only messages had passed before, but now am man. They needed him, now more than ever. Changing the past was no longer good enough. The instructions from the council had been clear. What to procure, what to construct from it, how to assemble it, so he made the machine. How to transport him bodily across time, and now he stood there on the bridge of the starship Archimedes, command of the vessel because only he who had saved the pres president's life twice before could helm the uh, Niev crew to their destiny, the fate of the galaxy. Okay, that's, I can see why they're crumpled. That's all I'll say. Ooh, three ring binder. Doesn't look like there's anything in it. Let's close this drawer. Um, anything in here? No. Oh, no, that looked like something I could look at. No, no, it's just open door, close door. Oh, examine paper. Pioneer CLD D703 combination laser disc combat, compact disc player. MSRP nine hundred ninety nine ninety nine. Wow, a thousand bucks for a CD player. Well, and a laser disc player, I'm sure. Um, CU CLD zero nine eight remote with black light, double sided play, headphone out, display on and off. Blah blah blah. They say that a jack of all trades is a master of none. I have to disagree. Mastery is not a question of specialization, but sureness of purpose and dedication to craft. If you happen to be in the market for a combination LDCD player, you'll be glad to know that Pioneer seems to share this particular. You can do better. Chinese, Japanese, Lebanese. What if JFK wasn't JFK? Back to basics. Set back in time to Dallas 1963 again. Interesting. Very. Oh, wait, I can zoom in. Intercept LHO in USSR. Magic bullet theory. Paradox resulted in JFK death being desired outcome. Literally, this seems just like the plot of the Stephen King book. Except space, apparently. Um, why not disrupt motorcade minutes before Lee Harvey Oswald can fire? State of emergency. Dallas cancels motorcade. Okay. It's literally just exactly what the Stephen King book was. Okay, we haven't been through here yet. Oh, it's creepy. Okay, oh, good. Whew. Okay, I thought I looked at the thing and I was like, wow, I must be tall. Okay. That book looks important. It's not. <laughs> A potted plant. Okay, turn on this lamp. Another tissue box. Sarah Holst, not gathering moss. 
True stories. I was a teenage drag queen. Readers, tell us about their worst moments. 90210. Does anyone still care? The male gaze. How to subvert it. I'd like to know that. Thanks. Nothing in the newspaper. I have a feeling there's nothing on the coaster, but I'll check anyway. Grab the pen. Okay. Huh. Is that book important? Well, I'm not, oh, here we go. I was like, I don't see anything in here. Grab the lid. No, because I want to look at what these are. Oh, grab dad's second book. Cool, okay. The Accidental Pariah. A message from our future saved the president's life once, but within the next 24 hours there'll be another attempt and the lines of communication are down. A James Bond for today's audience. Compelling, a thriller worth, worth its salt. Okay. Gosh, Dad. Ooh, what's that? Oh. Oh no, Moscow by night, new rules of love, Japan's bloody war on dolphins, ladies in the ring, the women of wrestling, the magazine for men. What else? Is it really just that in there? Okay. Okay. Ha! Throw it on the ground! Grab book! Stranger under my roof. Understanding teens. The teen years are fraught with change of all types. Physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. But these changes don't just affect your teen. Your teen's turbulent years are a challenge for parents as well. Maybe the biggest challenge you've yet faced since having children. This book holds insights into your teen's behavior from the very beginning as he or she first enters adolescence up through the end of the teen years as he or she enters young adulthood. The practical strategies here are based upon well-tested principles of pediatric psychology presented by Dr. Eliza, Eliza Medina, herself a mother of two teenagers. Prepare to gain new tools for establishing a productive, healthy, and loving dialogue with a stranger under your roof. I'd never had such a good conversation with my daughter. These simple tools can make all the difference to a relationship with your child. Oh, wow. Oh, a folder. Read letter. Dear Terrence, David asked me to write you regarding the reviews you've been submitting the last few months. Frankly, they're becoming more troubled than they're worth from an editing standpoint. There's a word limit. It's your job to stay under it, not mine to cut back to it. Even then, it's becoming harder and harder to weed out the tangents and non-sequiturs from the usable copy without heavy rewrites. <gasps> no. The thunder keeps scaring me. Um, the readers of Home Theater Aficionado um, want to hear about the quality and value of the hardware, not ruminations on your childhood. If it were up to me, I wouldn't be writing this letter. I'd just be cutting you loose. There's tons of guys half your age who would take half your rate to write stuff I could actually use. But David's known you for a long time, and he's the boss, so I'm giving you one more shot on his say-so. You should write him a nice note thanking him for his patience and generosity. Look through your old stuff and start submitting reviews like that again. Then everyone will be happy. Brent Kurtwood. 0451. Okay. Nothing else in here for me to look at? 0451. Don't let me forget. 0451. 0451. Okay. Here we go. Um, 0, 4, 5, 1. Oh, here we go. Read document. Mr. Masan, please find and close your original document in a typed copy for your records. The notarized copy has been filed at our offices. Thank you for entrusting our firm with this important matter. Sincerely, Jeffrey Wise. I, Oscar Mason, Masan, 
possessing full competence of mind and memory after a full survey of valued items to my name, do hereby declare this document my last will and testament. The following shall hold true upon my passing. I declare that I am a lifelong resident of Boone County, that I am unmarried and have no children. I declare that I have no outstanding debts to my name, to any creditors living or dead. I do hereby bequeath every item of value of which I may die possessed, including the dwelling and surrounding acres located at Arbor Hill, as well as any and all personal property and moneyed accounts to my nephew, Terrence L. Greenbrier Jr. of Ellis County. In the event that said Terrence L. Greenbrier Jr. should predecease me, then and in such an event, the bequest to him shall fall, and the same is bequeathed to his children as ordered by age and competence as stewards of the estate. I subscribe my name to this will this 13th day of August 1973. Signed, Oscar. Masson. I wonder if that was a Friday the 13th. I bet it was. Okay. Will and testament. Okay, that's the non-typed version. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Wow. Okay, this is fascinating, guys. Oof. Sorry, that chair looked funky to me for a second. It looked like it might be... Ah! It's dark. It's dark. Okay, turn on lights. Turn on lights. Turn on lamp. Open these. Open the cabinets. Anything in here? Nope. Okay, we're closing the cabinets back again. Wow, this game has got me nervous, but, like, curious at the same time. Play record. Reproductive system worksheet six. Ooh, that's not, not always the most fun thing about high school. Uh, below are two stories. The events are all out of order. Okay, this is interesting. Um, the menstrual cycle. What was that? The early morning of September 1st, 1939. Essa Glatz stares out the window of the train as it travels from Vienna back to her home village of Wylam in Poland. As the train rumbles along and the sun rises over the countryside, she can only think of her dear Borislav, the boy she is engaged to wed. Meanwhile, deep within her guts, an ovum starts to develop. Essa's train approaches. Sorry, that I'm such I'm such a kid. Um, Essa's train approaches its destination. Her heart races. The lining of the uterus is getting thick and soft as Essa slaps steps off the train her eyes dart quickly across the gathered crowd then there her dear boris still in his baker's smock he must have dropped his early morning duties at his father's shop to come meet her her heart skips a beat the ovary releases the ovum it travels through the fallopian tubes over the wheezing of the steam engines a deep hum grows it's coming from the sky Dark shadows pass over the station, a whistling sound. Essa, her thoughts only a second faster than the bombs, reaches out toward her dear Boris across the crowd. Their eyes lock, and the moment freezes. The flash and smoke envelops him almost instantly. In the assault by German forces, almost 75% of the people in her hometown are killed. The rest, including Essa, and for a time, Borislav, huddled in a half-destroyed church, he is blind, his legs are missing, bandaged with torn bedsheets. Essa's egg will not be meeting a sperm. It dissolves. About two weeks later, Boris loses his grip on life. Essa has given up her rations to keep Boris alive, but in the end, nothing can save him. Since the lining of the uterus is not needed for a pregnancy, it comes out through the vagina. Essa vows to survive. She sets off to join the Polish resistance as a daring spy and saboteur. Another ovum starts to develop in one of the ovaries, and the process begins again. It is incredible how the female body knows how to prepare for pregnancy. 
see me. That's hilarious. Ooh, turn on this lamp. World history. Um, grab the coaster, nothing. I feel like the fact that it keeps letting me pick up coasters means that eventually I'm going to be able to, like, there's gonna be a secret message on one of them. See anything in here? Nope. Nothing there, nothing there. All right, okay. Ooh, a bar. Ha! Huh. What is that? I'm trying to see it under the light. Visca vodka. Ha! <laughs> Just toss it. Oh, what is this now? I'm guessing whiskey, but I can't really see. Chuck it. Ha! <laughs> okay. Ooh, there's a note in there. Let's see, read letter. Dear Mr. Greenbrier, I write to inform you that unfortunately Mercury Books will be unable to publish, publish your follow-up to The Accidental Pariah. Despite the low sales of The Accidental Savior, we went ahead with the publication of the second book in hopes of the John Russell series catching on. However, sales of the second book have in fact been lower than those of the first, and so our stewardship of the series must end here. It has been a pleasure working as your publisher, and we wish you and John Russell the best in your future endeavors. Sincerely, Donald Fripp. Aw, that's so sad. Second book. Woof. Dave Brubeck. Brubeck Quartet. Ooh, a cool, like, picture. Ooh, okay. Freaking dark room. Freaking dark in here. Okay. Ah, this is creepy. Creepy shadows everywhere. More of his book. Oh, this is the third one. I can't pick it up though. Interesting. Anything? <gasps> oh, oh, a note. Read letter. Samantha. Uh, Samantha. <laughs> please, Samantha, please give this to your mother. Janice, thank you for having Danny over to your new home. He has missed having his friend Samantha in the neighborhood very much. Danny asked if he could lend Samantha his Nintendo Street Fighter fighting tape street fighting um and i gave my permission he needs to spend less time with those games anyway no hurry returning it let samantha know that she is welcome back to our house to visit anytime sincerely mary Sh shoots shoots i guess oh when you live in one place your whole life your next door neighbor is kind of like your default friend and daniel will huh. have a weirder over the years so moving away has been a good excuse to, like, not see him anymore. But he did always have the good Nintendo games. Maybe I'll give him a call. Okay. Still locked. Never found a key for that. Okay. Well, looks like it's about that time. So I will leave it here. We'll pick it back up next time. Um, feel free to follow me on all the relevant social medias down linked down below. Um, like, subscribe, comment. I'll comment back. And thanks so much for joining me. Hope to see you next time. Bye.